This is the Morning Swim Show for Friday, September 23rd, 2011. I'm your host, Peter Bush. In the Funniest Monitor today, we'll talk to Marcus Rogan. He's a two-time Olympic silver medalist, a philanthropist, and one of the funniest people we have ever had on the show. Marcus joins us right now in the Funniest Monitor from Los Angeles. Marcus, welcome to the Morning Swim Show. How are you doing? from training, but you know, that's, that's the life. I see you're at the pool. Yeah. I thought you didn't like to spend any more time at the pool than you absolutely had to. Actually, you know, I heard uh, they have these things. I think they're like play or wait, no, they call them games. They're happening this year. So this year I'm going to spend a little bit more time here. <laughs> they're lighting it up for you there in L.A. Hey, how's the whole uh, trying other strokes working out for you? Well, I noticed this this summer, you know, I swam at, at World Championships. They, they had the big meet where like the whole world came together in Shanghai. And after the butterfly, I was only two seconds behind. So I'm really improving. I'm really going to start. Maybe next summer I'll be only a second and a half behind, you know, and then maybe, maybe in eight years I'll be up with those guys. You almost medaled in that 200 IM. I'm impressed, man. I mean, we all know you're a great backstroker, but you could medal next year. Yeah, well, you'd hope so. I mean, I'm going to try. The thing is, it's a little difficult knowing that, that you'll be about half a pool length behind Michael and Ryan. So I'm thinking, um, I called Nancy Kerrigan. She's, uh, she's unfortunately <laughs> busy. So I'm, I'm fighting for the bronze medal. I think you mean you called Tanya Harding. Yeah, I'm not that good on American history. <laughs> Who do you think is going to win between Michael and Ryan in that event? Um, personally, I think Ryan's going to go a little bit... Uh, too much of a, of a, he's going to try too much to take over the world. He's going to go for a ridiculous number of medals and he'll be too tired from the 200 back right before because it's literally like 45 minutes. So I'm pretty sure Michael can win. Do you consider doing the 100 and 200 back like you uh, did in 04 and won the silver in both? Yeah, I was thinking about that, you know, but I, I don't think I can win that either. So I'd rather try something new. It's, you know, it's like when you get a new girlfriend, you'd rather go with her than go back to like an old squeeze. But Pearsall, no, no, no. Pearsall was that, uh, that maiden that you just couldn't beat, and he's out of the mix now, so. Yeah, but there, there are so many new guys. You know, the sport's so young, and I'm, I'm just, I, I, like, I like the I am. It's really fun to train, you know, because you can do so many things. Yeah, like all four strokes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have to actually. Like, it's illegal to do only three strokes. You have to do all four. Well, if they only did the back breast and free, you might win. Yeah, I was, I was petitioning that, you know, with the Brits, but they said, no, we we're going to play by the rules. Hey, uh, last time we spoke to you, you were getting ready for your trip to Ethiopia to mm -hmm. visit the school that you co-founded. So on a more serious yeah. note, how was it? Well, I, I think it might have been the, really the best thing I've ever done. You know, I think just... I'm, I'm paying for it now because I'm a little bit out of shape because I, I really spent three weeks just in the middle of Africa teaching. But it really, like, it helped me get an amazing perspective. And I was just, you know, when you, when you speak in front, of, in front of the kids and you see that they want to learn, it's, it's unbelievable, you know? Tell us about who these kids are. I mean, I imagine it's about as poor as it gets. You know, yeah, and, but we have, we're now, we, we quadruple the charity in the last couple of years we're now at 200 uh, children they're from from the poorest neighborhoods in Addis Adeba um, actually a couple of the kids lived on uh, in a cemetery I mean they were literally squatting there you know so we built them this summer we, we finally finished it we built them a small apartment complex and but in general it's it's the poorest of the poorest so we're providing education and uh, and uh, meals when they need it that's incredible what, uh, I mean, there's got to be some of the kids that really stood out to you and uh, you, you well, think about a lot. <laughs> well, we did, uh, a lot of them stood out because, you know, they, they just see, they, they want to learn so much, you know, like 
when we started, like I, you know, I love I love sounding like I'm smart. So I, I taught them something that I thought I knew, which was African geography. Turns out I, I didn't know anything, but we just we just learned it together, you know. But there's this one girl, Sion. She is, you know, she kept challenging me, and then she would she would go home, and look up like random African capitals and quiz me the next morning, you know, like uh, the capital of the Com Comoros Islands. I was like, what? But she looked it up and then she quizzed me and I was lucky to to have the map close by so I kind of squinted over to find out what it was, what it was and it was Moroni so I still remember that one. That's so neat. What do you want what do you want the future to look like for that school? With, with well the next the big project and I've set my goal to to raise a $212,000 by the time I I started the Olympics. Um, we want to build a whole center now. We want to build a, a center where they can really meet, where they can hang out, they can be safe, you know, where they can be, where they can be free, and just the kids, like the, like the kids that we want to develop into, into college students. Is it there, what, what you're doing there? I mean, how is it being perceived and recepted by, received by the town? Or the country, for that matter. Um, well, at first, you know, they they were skeptical. Got to be honest, because we rolled in there, and I originally I made I made a clear mistake. I walked in thinking, you know, I'm I can change the world, but it took me took me probably the first couple of weeks there, you know, when I was first there, to uh, to understand that I can I can only do so much. But then we just we just got down. We started teaching. Now I sent uh, two teachers down from uh, from uh, Stanford, and uh, and now we actually. And I'm really proud of this. We we got an award from the local uh, government saying saying just thank you, thank you for all the things you're doing for for our kids. And who knows? Maybe someday it'll have a pool, and you can go back <laughs> well, and. Uh... You know what? We th we were thinking about building a pool, and I took them to a pool, uh, and <laughs> they said, you know, because they were so excited to go to go swim, and since it was like the newest thing, and no one ever gone swim, that they pretended they were good swimmers, and I said, okay, sure, let's all jump in. And we needed all the lifeguards to get it. So we're holding off in the pool just yet. I used to pretend to be a good swimmer. Yeah, I, I still am doing that. I'm doing it professionally, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, you're doing a heck of a job. Do you think you'll pretend to be a good swimmer for a lot longer or maybe just one more year? Eh, you know, I'm, I'm not as old as I look, but I'm definitely getting up there, you know? So... I'll, I'll probably, I, I really think I'll spend some, some more time in Africa after the Olympics and to really find out what I want to do after. But, um, you know, I, I don't think I can, I can answer the question completely before I actually swam in London. Well, thanks again for joining us, man. That's amazing what you're doing there uh, for the kids in Ethiopia. And good luck with the whole figuring out how to put all four strokes together before <laughs> next summer. <laughs> thanks a lot. All right, thanks, Marcus. That's Marcus Rogan joining us in the Phoenix Monitor. That is it for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.